Leeds here to discuss this. So Talk Adala from Leeds University Student Union and the Times columnist and chair of the Index on Censorship, David Aronovich. Nice to see you both here. Talka, who would you not invite onto the campus? Who would, would you say is not welcome? So um, when our student societies decide that they want to put on events, they uh, ask us, um, do you think that there's any particular risk or do you think that there's any reason to think that students would feel threatened or unsafe by inviting certain speakers? And then we make a decision um, based on that assessment. What does that risk mean? What's the threat mean? Well, it's up to students really because we are students unions, so we are run by students um, and our primary our single most important task is to make sure that students feel safe and feel welcome in our building. Does that sound alien to you, David? Well, it does a little bit because you could argue that one of the major responsibilities of the student union is to ensure that there is a debate, a lively debate and discussion, that students are a part of democratic society discussing things rather than hermetically sealed away behind uh, a form of intellectual rampart within which they can therefore feel safe. And I mean, of course, the problem with what uh, Togi is saying is that it's all a problem of definition. Um, what do we mean by safe? Who feels safe? What do they feel safe from? And we know from a, lo a number of recent cases, say, Mariam Namazi, the uh, 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 Muslim activist, she was a Muslim, she now is anti-religious, who it was attempted to get her banned from Warwick University and they'd filled in one of these risk assessments and sure enough somebody had said, oh no, she said terrible things in the past, people won't feel safe around her and consequently the, with, the invitation was withdrawn. Same thing with Jermaine Greer, the attempt was made to get her not to speak at Cardiff because apparently trans students, transgender students might feel uh, either offended or unsafe so as a consequence. What does it mean then for your, your students to feel safe? Does it mean to n never to be offended by a speaker? Well, no, it, this is not about being offended. This is not about being offended. I'm very interested in when you, when you mention who has the right to define it. So I would say, who knows what, f what being unsafe feels like? It's our students. So I had not that long ago a woman come to me, a student, talking about how she had uh, experienced uh, two uh, hate crimes uh, racially motivated hate crimes. When she comes to me and says, I wouldn't feel safe if you invited the people from the same groups to the university union, I think that that definition of feeling unsafe is better than your definition of when she should feel unsafe. Why? A student union is for students. It's uh, it, the, our right to decide who comes into our building is the, the students, not a, a, a Times columnist. No, I, I, let me. I completely understand that, but that wasn't what your point you were making. The point you were making was that somehow or other the judgment would be better about whether or not this person was some kind of risk. Now, when this person comes to you, do you say to this person who comes to you, what is the nature of the risk that somebody speaking might represent to you? Let's actually look at what you think that is, or do you simply take it on trust? Black students experience racism. They don't need to go to their students' union to do that. We don't need to, to, to confront uh, women wi with misogyny in the students' union. We don't need to confront uh, Jewish students with anti-Semitism in the students' union. The students' union is a place where students can gather and debate and have healthy debate, but not a place where people should come and feel that... that, 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 that the, the, the question is, David, and, uh, there, is a, there is a possibility that... that you are, we are the dinosaurs here, that actually this generation... I'd say in my case, it's a downside certainty. <laughs> right, so this generation of students have, has said, actually, do you know what, we don't need to invite racists on. You've heard it, we don't need to invite people who think women are inferior. We've passed that level of intolerance, we're more diverse, and it's not going to add anything to the debate. Is that so wrong? Uh, yes, it is wrong. It is wrong partially because, actually, there's not a settled view about who these people are in any case. Uh, Jermaine Greer fits none of these categories, and yet uh, there's a petition Try that organized. one out. Would you have banned Jermaine Greer? Would you have signed a petition not to have Jermaine Greer? So, if... if I would find it... If, no platform policy, platform policy or not, uh, I would find it highly inappropriate and highly offensive to invite a person who doesn't think that transgendered people are real people to Transgender Awareness Week. So you wouldn't and, want somebody and, and, coming and to express that you, as so, an sorry, opinion. Can, can, can we just take, take it back, what you just said? You would find it highly offensive to invite somebody who didn't think that trans people were real people. Jermaine Greer's argument, whether you believe it or accept it or not, is that a transgender 
uh, male to female is not a real woman. That's her view. Do you think that that is a legitimate view for somebody to express in front of Leeds students? I am sure that, um, that if she was invited to Leeds University Union, that the Leeds uh, students who identified as transgender would say, this is not who we want in our building. And if they can convince the rest of the student body who have, they, would, who have democratically voted for our no platform policy and who have democratically would they voted, you? Who, have, who have democratically voted for officers such as myself, who believe in the no platform so, policy. So, so, so have have you had anyone that your students didn't feel safe with? Have, have no, and this is one probably one of the biggest misconceptions about no platform policy, that it means that we walk around banning this, that and the other, that people no, find no, offensive. No, no, no. Uh, even have, without banning, have you had people that have caused offence or have been controversial in your union? Naturally, of course. Of course, we, we, just this week we've had um, debates on counter-terrorism strategies, on whether we should stay in the EU, um, on uh, the composition of the curriculum with uh, even extreme views so expressed. What, so what is banned or what is not allowed then? Because I'm struggling to see why you would want students to be cosseted, if you like, from views they don't like. This is not about being, being, being safe from views that you don't like. This is about being traumatized and whether How the students should be... How would Jermaine Greer speaking traumatize people? who weren't already traumatised. In what kind of way do you think you can protect them from the outside world that banning Jermaine Greer helps you with? This or helps the, them this with? This is the upside of protecting people from the outside world. This is realising that people get traumatised in the outside world and that the student union is a safe space where people do not need to go. Suppose the Free Speech Society says, comes to me and I'm you, and they say, this talkie guy, he really makes me feel unsafe with his desire to stop people speaking freely. I don't feel safe around him. Will you stop him? What should I do? You should ask fellow students. Uh, and if they say yes? If they say yes. I should ban you. If you sign a petition for 2,500 people that I'm, you know, somehow uh, traumatising people, then I would step down. That's, that's how the Talk, democracy works. Do you not works. worry that your students, even through this democratic process, are having a much poorer experience in their student views, their, their life, than if they just said, we're going to take all these people, we're going to ask them controversial questions, we may hate them, but we'll listen to them. So students spend their lives being challenged academically. They go studying abroad, they study with people from different nationalities, they go to the student unions and debate all kinds of things. But the union I will sounds challenge, like a I will, house. I will challenge you to find a group of people who, uh, you know, get a, a wider range of views and who are confronted with um, more different experiences or a wider range of different experiences than, than students. So, so in that case, why on earth would they worry? Why would you stop them reading The Sun, for instance? Why would you not sell it if that's what they wanted to buy? Why would you not allow speakers in, any speakers that they wanted to invite? If they're so open and they're so able to debate and they're so robust, why can they no, not No, the do question that? is, if you, have, if you have a society okay. that, has, that is racist, for instance, then why would you let your student uh, union be racist as well? N not in my union. Okay, great. Thank you both very much. Thank